Are you sure about this? I don't think this is a particularly good idea. Listen, you keep saying you need a vacation. Now I get this fantastic offer, and what? You're jealous? It's not about that. But don't you find it a little odd that you win some holiday you don't even remember registering for? Probably just slipped my mind. I'll be fine. You think you can survive for a few weeks without me? I'll be fine. You're the one I'm worried about. I'll send you a postcard from the beach. Take care, Doc. Chen made his way to the Airbus A380. The words Kingfisher Airlines, prominence on the fuselage. Welcome back. Today I bring you SCP-3531, Sky Food. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on the notifications. The layout of the plane appeared relatively normal. The usual seat configuration and seat options. What did strike Chen as a little odd was the logo of the airline, a large hook. He disregarded his curiosity and put it down to marketing creativity, gone a little sideways. As he made his way to his seat, a stewardess stopped him. Good afternoon. Are you Mr. James Chen? Call me Chen. Only my mother. Never mind. Yeah, that's me. Welcome aboard Kingfisher Airlines. You've received a complimentary upgrade to first class. Oh yeah? Great. Front of the plane. Top deck, sir. The food is much better up there. Lead the way. The second floor first class seating was something else. It was Chen's first time flying in first class. Each person had their own private seating area. Chen settled into his seat as the crew made their final preparations for takeoff. Once they had reached cruising altitude, a voice came over the PA system. Hello, everyone, and welcome to your flight with Kingfisher Airlines. I'll be your pilot. Now that we've successfully taken off, make sure to keep your seatbelts unbuckled. Make our jobs a little easier, eh? He hadn't heard that before. Keep your seatbelts unbuckled? A stewardess returned with a tray of drinks. Can I offer you a glass of champagne or orange juice? Chen reached for the champagne, but something seemed a little odd. Best to keep his senses on full alert. He took the glass of orange juice instead. Please make yourself comfortable, sir, and let me know if there's anything else you need. Might I suggest you unbuckle your seatbelt? You'll be more comfortable that way. Appreciate it, but I think I'll keep it on. Are you sure? You wouldn't want to be stuck on the plane if... something happened. Chen gave her a quizzical look. But before he could say another word, she walked away. The plane started to make a slow turn to the right as Chen looked out the window. On the ground, a small stream of water ran across the floor. The attendant returned with a tray carrying nuts, napkins, and hot towels. Sir, warm snack? Thank you. Chen took a packet and set it down on his tray table. Don't eat that, a voice from behind him said. Chen started to turn around. Stop! Stay seated! Don't move. A hand came from behind his chair. In it was a syringe. Inject yourself with this. You'll need it if you want to get off this flight alive. What? Who are you? Just do it. Sir, I've told you before. This area is for first class meals, passengers only. Please return to your seat now. Okay, okay. Remember what I said. As the stewardess escorted the man away, he glanced back at Chen. What the hell? What was Kloss doing on his flight? And what was the needle for? It didn't matter. If Kloss said to do it, he'd better do it. He injected himself with the syringe and hid the needle in the front seat pocket. Nothing. He waited another five minutes. Still, nothing. As he reached down for the packet of peanuts, he quickly pulled his hand away. It wasn't nuts anymore, but worms. It was a packet of worms. The lights flickered as the plane jolted upwards. He heard the stewardess in his ear. We're experiencing a little turbulence. Please ensure your seatbelt is unbuckled for your safety. He'd had enough of this. He turned to face her and give her a piece of his mind. What he saw before him wasn't that same stewardess, but some sort of sea creature. She had tentacles and scales all over her, but she was wearing the crew's uniform. Um, okay, sure. Thank you? You're most welcome, sir. Chen heard a crack of thunder and looked out the window. Where had the storm come from? As he peered out, he saw an electric eel flying next to the plane. What was going on? The plane banked deeply. Water rushed from one side of the plane to the other. Seaweed and fish strewn about the water as it rushed past. 
Now the water level was starting to rise. The plane was filling up with water. Klaus rushed down the aisle and stopped at Chen's seat. Did you take the injection? Yeah. I wish I had, though. This is insane. The window burst open and an eel came flying through. Water poured through the open window. Chen looked around the plane. All the passengers appeared calm, as if they couldn't see anything that was happening. More stewardesses came down the aisle, an assortment of sea creatures, with most having fish hooks for arms. They moved through the cabin, dragging passengers behind them. Be careful with the first class meals. They won't be happy if they're not fresh. What do we do? We need to bring this plane down. Now. All right, let's head for the cockpit. They checked that the coast was clear and got up from their seats, heading for the pilots. As they crept down the aisle, they saw more of the cabin crew picking up passengers and dragging them off. They reached the cockpit door. How are we going to get them to open it? Naughty, naughty. It's rude to dine and dash. Behind them were two of the cabin crew, hook hands at the ready. No, that one's no good. Let them go. We're done here. They heard the click of the cockpit door open. Chen and Klaus dashed in and shut the door behind them. Eh, you're a constant nuisance. You don't smell good, and I'm sure you don't taste great either. Chen and Klaus turned back and looked at the cockpit display. You! They heard the PA crackle to life. Hors d'oeuvres and canopies, welcome to the fisherman's market. The current time is 10.45 p.m. and the temperature is 16 degrees Celsius. Please remain in your sealed packs and try to remain still until fully defrosted. We hope you enjoyed your flight and we look forward to serving you again soon. Thank you for flying Kingfisher Airlines. SCP-3531 is to be stored in the hangar of Site-38. Tests are to be conducted at the discretion of the Site Director. SCP-3531 is an Airbus A380 airliner. SCP-3531 is unremarkable in both exterior and interior appearance and is non-anomalous when not in flight. However, photographs, videos, and audio recordings taken within SCP-3531 during flight show various forms of aquatic-based anomalous phenomena, as well as the manifestation of several humanoid figures acting as flight attendants on board. Despite this, passengers remain either ignorant or unwilling to comment on the phenomena, denying all claims and in most cases refusing to believe video evidence. SCP-3531 was discovered after routine inspection of its black box footage by Mobile Task Force Lambda-4 Bird Watchers. The recordings showed the following message played over the intercom, exhibiting its cognitohazardous effects. Okay, I got a little proposal for you. I know King Fisher only wants the best, so you better believe me when I say I found the best. Down in a certain little universe, in a certain little planet, all over it even, I found these little beauties. They're called humans. You'll love them. They've got these beautiful hands, four fingers, and that's not even including the opposable thumbs. Strong, dexterous legs, a full, meaty torso. Trust me, it's the whole package. Everyone's gonna want them. Problem areas, you say? Well, they've got a substandard moral compass, that's for sure. But between you and me, I don't think anyone will notice. Don't trust those giveaways and spam messages you receive. Most of them surely are just click bait. No, no. You should always follow the instructions of your cabin crew. Remember, we're here for your safety and to serve you. As always, have a care and remember to subscribe, like, and share, if you would. Until next time, farewell.